but yeah, no, this this is definitely um, uh, relatively exciting stuff. So it's a good time yeah. to be a Europeanist. It's a lot better than us coming on and me just being like, so um, the he verbs in Anatolian, are they like the perfect? Yeah, no, they're not. That's 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 the answer. But start this video by thanking my Patreon supporters who helped make it possible for me to make a living teaching the subjects of my expertise in the world's most beautiful places. And uh, to everyone who buys my books, thank you so much. So let's talk about this, this new discovery. I mean, you know, I read the two links uh, that you shared with me. Um, looked around for anything else i'm not finding a ton about this have you seen anything that's not publicly not really no it, they're they're very um they're keeping it very uh uh hush hush like very discreet about details um uh, but uh but we won't have to wait too long for them um uh, just so people are um aware this is the official announcement in english probably people have seen it and this is, I, I mean, you may have seen other sort of popular distillations of this, but this is the fullest, this is the official version of the German announcement. Well, the, I mean, the official version is German, but this is the English version of it on the same website. Uh, and this, as near as I can tell, this still has the most details about what, what actually was found. But um, yeah. they're sparse. Uh, they're, 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 I mean, they're very few, but what's there is, I think, tantalizing just like even in this uh even in this very short article so um absolutely and and part of what that article highlights and by the way i didn't see anything in the german version that's not in the english version i think they're just straight translation no i think this is a straight translation and a very nice one at that yeah but um but one thing that was in there that i thought was was a really good thing to highlight is that it seems like hittite scribes were pretty interested in rituals and other languages from their neighborhood yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So like, I mean, often this is part of Hittite ritual practice. So like the Hittites, when they would perform a ritual, so many of these rituals had components that involve speaking some other language that's not Hittite. And uh, some of these are Anatolian languages of the Indo-European language family, like Palaic and Luvian. Those are the two, uh, those are the two, uh, well, those are the two languages we have uh, att attested in this way. Uh, yeah, uh, in the Hittite royal archives, and then um, uh, and then there are also non-Indo-European languages that show up in uh, in here as well. Things like Haddock, uh, and um, uh, on, not so much in these in the same kind of ritual context, but we do. I mean, they also write down Hurrian. Uh, we also have little bits of other languages that they just uh, decided to record for whatever reason. Sometimes we're not even sure what the language was. Um, I was just at the recent. Um, uh, Hittitology, this big international Hittite con uh, conference that runs every three years. Uh, and there was um, uh, a scholar there, this guy, David Sasfiel, who spoke about another one of these uh, non-Indo-European language that's attested that we've now, we think, been able to identify, this language, Kaskin, with, um, uh, we can just, just using so, some fragmentary clues kind of say, oh, this is probably the language of these well, these hit these sort of uh, sort of well known enemies of the Hittites uh, that we uh, that we know quite a lot about um, from archaeology and from the historical records, but like we didn't have any of their language before. Interesting. And uh, is that am, am I right that a lot of the cuneiform Luwian material is preserved in this way? Yeah, tons of it. So yeah, cuneiform. So the the Luvian that is attested in cuneiform script, it it, it basically there's two things, uh, two ways that it's that we find it primarily. One is you just have like Luvian words used in Hittite texts, because again, one thing important thing to remember is especially in the later in the empire period in Hittite, sort of at the height of their power and and later. Uh, so 
like yeah, the thirteenth, uh, the fourteenth century, and going forward, uh, everyone is basically speaking Luvian. I mean, there's just tons and tons of people in and around Hakusa speaking Luvian. Presumably, that was like the major language of the you know of the common peoples on the street, uh, and um, uh, and so uh, you know, as these scribes are copying down texts, uh, they often uh, use or or even you maybe insert it, say say they're say they're uh, producing whether it's a new text they might use alluvian word in a in a copy of a text they might insert alluvian word for some Hittite word they didn't know but they they can sort of insert it contextually so like we have all of these alluvian words that are just attested basically in Hittite contexts uh, you know they're using them like the way they would use the equivalent Hittite word and then there's these kids then there's these these all of the stuff that's uh, of it, and that we have ritual materials for. Um, so, uh, so basically, the Hittites are doing a ritual, and some part of it involves, uh, yeah, uh, speaking some Luvian uh, kind of Luvian incantations. Um, uh, and actually, I can I can show people what this looks like uh, in, oh, yeah, in, in a moment if people are interested. I mean, it's it's. Uh, it, I'll make I think you co-host. Just to just to say that. Uh, you know, this is one of the tantalizing bits in this. He said, "It says hidden in occultic ritual text written in Hittite is a recitation in a hitherto unknown language." And like that gives us really like we know it. I know. I mean, without having even seen this, I don't know how much there is, but I know exactly. I mean, I can show you guys kind of exactly what it's going to look like. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So okay, then I'll, I'll I'll do that very quickly. It should take more than a minute, but um, uh, so. Uh, and so, so yeah. when another, when a non-Hittite or non-Luvian language is is quoted in one of these texts, do you get them glossing anything in it, like and and in Hedic that means or something like that? Or... Uh, no, no, but no. We just get it introduced uh, with a little formula that says this is going to be in another language, and then we have non-Hittite. Oh. Uh, and sometimes you don't even get the, you know, it doesn't even tell you what language, but but in good cases it does. So I just want to show you very quickly, this This is another, this is a, a cuneiform Luvian, uh, this is a, a Hittite ritual. This is called the Ritual of Zarpia. Um, this, uh, and um, uh, this is a, this is a very strange text that actually has, it's almost like a bilingual ritual. Some of it, the, some of the incantations are in Hittite and some of them are in Luvian, uh, but all of those, both, both, the Hittite and Luvian incantations uh, are kind of almost versions of each other, and uh, and uh, it's all kind of mixed in with the actual uh, description of the ritual practice. Uh, all of that is going to be in Hittite. So everything you see here in italics, this is all Hittite. Um, just to sorry, that this is a, a an edition of the text that has been transliterated. For those of you who want to actually see what it looks like, it looks like this. <laughs> this is the so uh, so this upper left portion is what we're looking at uh, right here. You can see it's kind of fragmentary in the upper left corner. Uh, and uh, and you'll see that actually this bit that we see in the upper left corner here, uh, we're sort of we're kind of filling that in. Like we think we know what it says, but uh, but uh, you can see it's kind of lost on the stone. Mm -hmm. So so in this case, in the ritual of Zarpia, we have this guy, you know, it says something like uh, thus speaks, uh, you know, uh, thus speaks Zarpia, the sort of, I don't know, some people translate this as uh, physician, some people as exorcist, some kind of a, a person with ritual knowledge, uh, and he's from Kitsuwatna. So Kitsuwatna is a dialect of, is a dialect of Luvian. Uh, and then it says and tells you under the conditions under which he performs the ritual. So when the year is literally crushed or something, but like this means the year has gone to ruin uh, and there's dying in the land. Uh, not totally clear what we should actually fill in here, but something like um, uh, uh, behind whatever city uh, there is, things have gone to ruin. Uh, the uh, the master of the house uh, does the following, and so that's the that. So then we're going to have a bunch of uh, a long description in Hittite of all of these, like you know, sometimes it'll involve ritual manipulation of objects, things like. Uh, there's a bronze axe that gets moved around in this ritual. There's uh, often drink a uh, breaking of bread and drinking of wine and pouring of libations and so on. Uh, and then, um, uh, and then eventually we get further along and we get to something like this. Uh, then the this is the same guy, the master of the house. 
Uh, this is the ritual client, uh, the one who's interested in performing this ritual to do something. In this case, it's actually supposed to ward off a plague. Um, he does something, uh, probably holds uh, a scepter made out of Sirocco wood. Uh, then he takes his place inside the gate. And here's our key formula. He, he speaks or he chants or something like this, focus gets he, uh, as follows, Lou Willy in, Lu, in Luvian. Okay. Uh, and so presumably what we have in this new text is something like uh, something that looks more, you know, very, very close to this. But instead of Lou Willy, we have something like Kalasmili. So there's this place, Kalasma, that gets identified in Hittite texts. It shows up about uh, 25 times, I think, in the Hittite corpus. And um, uh, we know enough to know uh, basically uh, where it is, uh, just to zoop over here. Uh, probably in this area, it's sort of by this, um, uh, by Pala. So uh, so this is where Palaic was spoken, kind of vaguely in this area to the north. It's well, primarily to the west and somewhat to the north of, uh, of the Hittite capital, Hattusa. And somewhere out here, we think, uh, is um, uh, the, 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 the place that's described as the land of Kalasma. And so um, flashing back here, oh, sorry, uh, here, you, we should get something like, yeah, he speaks as follows Kalasmili. And, mm. uh, and, uh, and then we get something that follows that is not Hittite, right? That's the main thing. Uh, and then we can ask the further question of, well, what is it if it's not Hittite? And so a uh, couple of questions that come to my mind here as, as, as we're looking at this, um, you know, from the little bits of Hittite that I know from, you know, Indo-European class, um, I see a lot of this um, this new, right, which is there, so often used as a connective, right, between sentences and Hittite. Mm -hmm. I always look for these clitic chains as being really <laughs> characteristic of Hittite. Um, there's that wa clitic for quoted speech, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So is that used? Is is the same uh, quoted of clitic wa used for foreign speech? Uh, uh, yes, sometimes, but often when they introduce like a longer passage like this, they don't use the wa clitic, which would show up like oh, okay. you might expect it to show up here. So like. Think of this like if you were writing, like think of it as the difference is like embedding a quote like directly in a paragraph that you're writing versus like using a, a colon for a block quote. Does that make, that make yeah. like so? This is more like yeah, a block sense. quote, and then all of the stuff in here in, is that follows is in Luvian. So we have this this deity Santa, which shows up in Luvian and Lishan, but is not really a Hittite deity. It's more associated with these sort of Luvic languages, these ones that are more closely related to each other, Luvian and Lishan. Uh, we have these Anarumi deities, which we don't know much about, but one very nice thing here, and this is in the morphology, this ending in C, this is the Alluvian nominative plural ending. Uh, in Hittite, this would be some, would just be S, E-S, which looks more familiar from an Indo-European perspective. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and so we can already see some you know, some important morphological differences between um, Luvian and Hittite. Uh, you can see that same nominative plural ending on the relative pronoun, um, uh, uh, Quincy, and here again, Quincy in the next clause. Um, uh, in Hittite, these would be both que. So, uh, so, so, you know, the, it, they're, they're, they're very similar, but what's obvious, it's obviously not Hittite, right? Mm -hmm. And this new language was identified in the article as being probably more of the Luvic uh, sub branch. Of yeah, so that's the other kind of like tantalizing detail that really makes you want to like indulge in a bit of speculation about like, what do we, what did they find before they actually reveal it? And maybe I should say, we are going to get it relatively soon. Um, uh, it should be published by March of next year at the latest. Uh, and for those who are really, really interested, I think there will be an interim report on the linguistic contents sometime more like the beginning of next year in the next issue of the um uh the it's the sort of the publication of the german archaeological institute the archaeologische uh anzeige <laughs> uh i can send the web address to people if they're interested but um um but uh but yeah so uh uh we, yeah so we'll see it soon and then i was going to say something else that i've now lost the thread on i 
Um, well, let me let me see if I can get you back in a thread because I, I was thinking, you know, again, not an Anatolianist, but you know, you look at Hittite, you look at at Luvian, and um, you know, you can see these related languages. So I'm kind of wondering, you know, what is it that's that's sort of shouting to them? This is different from Luvian, right? Yeah, you know, like right. Sorry, I think you, what you want is different from Hittite and more similar to Luvian. And yeah. and uh, so in the first place, we can say like, what are features that are non-Hittite? And um, uh, those are uh, pretty pretty recognizable. So like, what would you? What could they possibly have seen to say this is non-Hittite? And like, right. especially given that there might there might not be very much. So like, you know, here again, this is just one excerpt from this ritual, but we have basically seven lines of of Luvian, and then now here, as you can see, by split it switches back to italics. Now we're back in Hittite, and then there's a little more Luvian, but like we're probably not dealing with more than a few dozen lines uh, of this text at most. So what could they possibly see in just that small amount of text that would um, make them be able to identify it uh, in the first place as non-Hittite and then beyond that, um, uh, probably as, uh, as as closer to Luvian than say Palaic, which would be kind of natural given where we actually think that the, the land of Kalasma was. Uh, and so, uh, so I've, I, I've been thinking about this <laughs> uh, and I, ha I have some kind of preliminary, preliminary thoughts. Um, uh, one, one thing that I can just easily show you here is that one, a thing that we find in, in Luvian, but not, and also Palaic, uh, but not Hittite, uh, is in a third plural verb form like this one, Hiskianti, uh, it, it would this in Hittite would end in an ending on C. So the sequence T in 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 um uh in the Luvic languages all be, uh became uh, sorry in Hittite became uh, an affricate so mm -hmm. uh and uh in uh all of the Luvian and Lycian and also actually Palaic uh it just stayed as T. So that would be like an instant clue. Like you think you have a third plural verb form. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you have something that that has this basic shape, something like NT or NT, uh, and it doesn't show that affrication. That's like, that would be like, oh, this isn't Hittite right away, you know? Oh. Um, so, so that might be something that they could find in just a small amount of texts. Um, uh, another one possibly, uh, although we can't, I don't think we have an example of it here in our, in our Luvian text in front of us, uh, but what, uh, but you talked about how Hittite has this sort of omnipresent sentence connective new that you can oh. see here. Uh, Luvian doesn't, uh, does not have that uh, at all. Um, uh, instead it uses a connective uh, that just is the, the ah, ah is the main sentence connective in the language. Uh, it works basically functionally just like new, introduces new, you know, sentences and sort of action that follows logically from the, from the preceding, but, um, but, it is, uh, but but it's a different morphological piece, and so uh, that could be another one. But that's also shared by Palaic. Um, and then when we get to you know to narrow it down to Luvian uh, more specifically, uh, then we would have to kind of take a deeper dive into. So I, I, I mean I think the key would be they've they've almost certainly found some interesting morphological features like that. That's if you only have a tiny bit, you can you know these these morphological features I think are going to be the salient ones and. Um, uh, and so I suspect suspect that that's what they found. Yeah, I was wondering if, um, you know, going going to the question of whether Luvian has reflexes of all three of the Beeler series in Proto-Indo-European versus Hittite not. Um, mm -hmm. I was wondering if maybe there was some key vocabulary item that looked like it backed up that idea i don't know your your intuition is good that's on my list of possible uh possible features that would uh, identify it with luvian uh and lishan more specifically so um uh, here's an example of one of those things so uh you have this uh in hittite you have well in in these anatolian languages the proximal dictic pronoun that is to say the thing that means the word for this in the language uh is a really nice example so in hittite this shows up as uh, maybe to give to give a tiny yeah in Hittite this uh, the nominative singular of that pronoun is kus 
In Lubian, it is sus. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, and that shows the, as you kind of alluded to kind of pretty quickly, uh, the differing outcomes of palatal, Indo-European palatal velars. Uh, um, uh, in Luvian, these uh, become sometimes a K sound and sometimes an affricate S, but, uh, but in Hittite, they always just become a K. Uh, so, uh, so this is an interesting kind of, I mean, it's an archaism, basically, of the Luvian language is a famous one that it shows this, uh, these two different outcomes uh, of the plain Indo-European plain velars and the Indo-European palatal velars. Uh, uh, and so, in, yeah, basically, under certain conditions, you get three different outcomes of the of the three different Indo-European velars in, in Luvian, but not in Hittite. Right. Um, so which, here, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, which is pretty unique. Yeah, it, all it's, the family. It's, it's possibly unique in the family, and except that there is some. Um, uh, this is the Greek, like semi, like depending on what vowels connected to it. Well, there's condition stuff, but basically, supposedly Albanian has reflexes of all three uh, of all three velar series. Um, all, same kind of thing as Luvian, like it's it's um, uh, it's supposed to be contextual, like so. Only in some contexts, you have a kind of split within. I'm not remembering the details rightly, so I'm not going to repeat them. But basically, under certain conditions, you get different outcomes uh, of all three different uh, of the Indo-European velar series. But anyway, so this, but this was, you know, the the evidence is really good and extensive in uh, in Luvian, and so you know, this was very important when it was discovered. Uh, and, and so I can show you one. So just to be clear, that that pronoun, the one that means this, this is an example of it. This, um, uh, this is. Uh, well, th this basically is this this za that you see at the beginning of here. This is that big dick pronominal stem. Um, okay. uh, so this is uh, something like, uh, you know, uh, let no one uh, take a step back toward uh, these these gates uh, okay. maliciously or something in in for evil. Uh, and so uh, that uh, this this z uh, this za element here. That's another sign that we're dealing with the Luvian in Hittite. This would have a, a K at the beginning, basically. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah. So, so that's on my list, and uh, both of, both of those things you mentioned. So, your your uh, I think your intuition is is really good. I think almost everything else would take uh, more to notice. Possibly one another one is this 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 nc ending nc well nc ending uh, of the nominative plural. Or in the um, uh, in the accusative plural, you would have the same. You have ants like this, uh, just or really just ants as the ending in Hittite. That would be different. Again, it would be nominative plural and s and uh, accusative plural and in os spelled us. But um, mm. uh, so so these kinds of morphological features. I think I hope I'm ho I'm hoping I'm kind of trying to register my guess now. Uh, I'll be curious to see how it actually. Uh, turns out, but but I think these are the the sort of features that uh, could turn up in just a small amount of uh, a new text that we found. Yeah, I mean, like I, I I guess I was kind of trying to analogize it to if if I read somewhere like new Germanic language discovered, and you know there was only this much detail in the article, and it was like oh, and it looks like it's probably North Germanic. You know, I'd be thinking like, well, okay, so they have enough that they can tell, that, but like, so what's different about it? You know, like um, mm -hmm. so. It, yeah, it's a it's an interesting position to be in, kind of wondering like, all right, what's the what's the tip off that it goes down this road, but then goes off on its own? Mm -hmm. um, it'll, yeah, it'll be really really curious to see what it what it what it actually has. Um, yeah, we uh, there's there's one question I've seen in the chat so far, and folks feel free to throw your questions and comments in, including about other Indo-European Anatolian subjects. Let us be a resource to you. Uh, Davis says, uh, would it be fair to say in some sense the Hittites could have been our earliest attested linguists? I mean, I don't know. I, you know, uh, I don't really know if there is, I suspect there is already an, uh, an, an, uh, a grammatical tradition in, in Akkadian before this period. So I would mm -hmm. say probably not. Uh, and certainly there were, they were doing, I mean, so yeah, I mean, I mean, one thing that, you know, I can say for certain without being an expert on that is that we have uh, very early material already uh, in in Anatolia attested in um, uh, attested basically from the, uh, you know, an Acadian, an Acadian trading outpost that was there, sort of an important one uh, at at um, uh, at Kanesh. 
uh, and they, you know, the Hittite, they, they would have these lexic. So this is actually the very earliest Hittite and Luvian that we have uh, is not actually in, it's just little words uh, in an Akkadian text. So they would make these lexical lists where like this Akkadian word is equivalent to this Hittite word is equivalent, you know, uh, and, and, and so on. Um, and so, uh, and yeah, there are, there are names in these archives that show up uh, that are clearly Hittite and or Luvian. So, so, um, so that uh, must so, be yeah. the oldest material in any Indo-European language. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess, in some sense, right? But it's, it's not. I mean, it's not. You know, these are just basically just uh, a few words, primarily personal names um, that are sort of identifiably. But it does, it just does show us some cool things, like that already. Well, I mean, one thing we can it tells us is that already by the the earliest attestation of those of that documentation, which is like. Um, 19th century BC, so several centuries before Hittite, Luvian and Hittite were already differentiated. Like, um, mm. like so you can see stuff that has recognizably Luvian morphology and Luvian sound changes versus things that have Hittite, uh, Hittite and Hittite sound changes. Uh, so, um, uh, so all that stuff is important. But, but uh, yeah, this is getting far from the question, which is just that they were doing things like making lexical lists, and there may have even been a more involved uh, grammatical tradition in uh in in Akkadian um that goes back further than Hittite I just don't I just you know I don't know that stuff so well okay uh B. Yaborski asks uh is there a dictionary or lexicon or list available with all the Anatolian place names that have been identified with Greek or other Mediterranean names like uh Relusa to, to William you know that's a good question and I don't know of anything like that one one thing I can say, and that I, I used to follow up on the on the uh, on this 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 the location of Kalasma, there's a cool um, uh, Hittite project. I think it's a Euro project that recently got completed. Um, uh, that where you can look up the attestation. It, it tells you where uh, any place name that is mentioned in Hittite texts. It tells you everywhere that it's mentioned. Um, oh. This is the web address, and I use this to search. Uh, uh, Kalasma to see how often and where we get uh, where we get uh, mentions of that name. Um, okay, and sure. So you know, I was like, oh, it's attested twenty five times. How did I find that out? I used this tool. So this has a list of every place name that's mentioned in um, uh, in all of in all of the type texts, I think. And um, but but no, it doesn't have that. Like uh, it doesn't do the other side of what um, I'm sorry, uh, B. Jaworski is uh, asked about. Uh, which is, yeah, trying, you know, picking out the ones that have been identified uh, with um, uh, with Greek or other me Mediterranean place names. Um, uh, yeah, that would be a useful tool. Uh, yeah, yeah just so if, if anyone wants to make one, go <laughs> go ahead and, uh, you know, you'll get into lots of controversies, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, Akiawa, is that the same as... Oh, right, is that the Akiya? Uh, is that the same as, uh, you know, the, a lot of this stuff comes up in movie in context, like, is that, you know, there's this big thing about Akiawa versus Adana, which, what it, what place is, you know, they referring to, and what, how should we interpret uh, certain, well, read certain Luvian signs. Anyway, uh, no, no need to get into that here, but I just mean, um, I suspect a lot of the place name identifications are, um, are, are disputed. Yeah. Well, and it's it's tough because it's sort of like, you know, the Anatolian evidence is waning as the Greek evidence is waxing. And so you have this, you know, like the end of the tale and the beginning just sort of barely overlap. And it's, yeah, it's a yeah. tough. Well, you get some intersection if you're willing to look at the first millennium languages of Anatolian, which are much more fragmentary. Like you do get at least Lycian a little, and, you know, like Lycian and, and, and Lydian and um, mm -hmm uh you know to a lesser extent carrion and stuff so you know these first millennium languages at least fill in a little bit of the gap on the anatolian side but yeah you're absolutely right that the trajectory is like uh uh yeah i mean i agree that you know it's and, difficult yeah and those first millennium languages are typically written in greek derived alphabets right they they give up on the cuneiform they're, they're basically yeah they're basically all written in greek derived uh, scripts of different kinds um yeah but it, i mean for for someone who's familiar with greek uh, getting used to and reading the lydian uh, sorry like the lycian script or something and i'm just mostly talking about lycian because it's after 
So after Luvian, it's the next best uh, attested. It. Well, after Hittite, followed by Luvian, and then Lishan is the next best attested in the language. So, um, so I, I mentioned that one a lot. But um, but if you if you're familiar already with the Greek script, then um, learning the you know the the Lishan like version of it basically, which includes some extra signs and also some different values, um, is is pretty easy. It's not not a not a big task. Uh, Jay wanted to know, can we tell if and to what extent the phonology of these other languages is being filtered through Hittites? Yeah, that's uh, that's hard. Um, I mean, if you know it. Uh, yeah, uh, that, that, that I would say that's a that's a that's a pretty hard question. I mean, in part. It's not just being sort of filtered through Hittite that we're doing. It's basically like filtered through Hittite as accessible via Hittite writing conventions. Wow. Uh, uh, one one interesting question, for instance, concerns like what the values of the Indo-European stop, where you know Indo-European and then Anatolian stops work um, in Luvian. Um, uh, that's one that there's a lot of debate about, for instance, and it's like you know say. Um, so in Hittite, uh, I mean, I think there's pretty good phonological evidence to show that like the opposition between Proto-European T and D became an opposition between mm -hmm. a long geminate T and uh, a, a shorter, just plain T that probably, you know, would have been voiceless in some contexts and probably voiced in others. Mm -hmm. But it, it's really a, it become a linked contrast. Uh, in Luvian, that's represented in cuneiform. We have the same, con the, 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 that, that, those you know, the, the same sets of morphemes are, are kind of represented in the same way, but whether there's really no phonological evidence that that's that, uh, that that is the nature of the contrast. So I, I mean, I think it's at least conceivable or arguable that Luvian just actually just had the Indo-European contrast between T and D and the Hittites represented in something that was kind of close to that as you know as close as it was you know as close as they could map these things on in their language so that's just like a, a concrete example of one of these things but again it's like every one of these things is going to be more complicated based on because of the the um the sort of the impreciseness of the orthography um yeah so so the answer i think the answer to the question is almost certainly but uh but uh but it's hard to decide yeah how much of it is this orthography and how much of this uh yeah I, I you know one thing that the, i guess maybe the biggest issue with doing this for for hittite is that um you know we don't have any uh you know we can we can look at say the rendering of like um recognizable place names or something like that but um but uh, you know a lot of times uh we can compare say how a place name is represented in a place name that is say a luvian place name or even a greek place name uh, as it's represented in uh, say hittite and uh, in its in its cuneiform script, and then we can compare it to how it's represented, say, in an, in uh, an alphabetic script of a language of Anatolia much later. But it, it's not an apples to apples comparison because again, you're like there's a thousand year gap between these things, oh. or maybe not a thousand, but like six or eight hundred years. So it's like this is it, I don't know. It's very hard to triangulate evidence to really pin down the precise uh, the precise phonetic uh, values of things. Right. Right. Well, and I. Partially gets back to my complaints about writing systems. But. Uh, Cameron wanted some more clarification about the relationship between Hittite and, and Luvian. Would you describe them as sister languages? Yeah, sisters is a good way to describe them. Um, they are both, uh, I, you know, there's not a lot of things that are agreed upon in Anatolian, um, in inner Anatolian subgrouping. So obviously we have this whole we all agree that there's this set of Indo-European languages, the Anatolian ones, that all branched off together and are all related to each other more closely than to the other Indo-European languages. But the internal, uh, uh, you know, internal affiliations of those branches uh, are somewhat uh, disputed. Uh, basically, the one thing that everyone agrees on is that 
Uh, Lishan and Luvian are, and pro, pro, well, <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as you start going beyond that, you get to probably, but Lishan and Luvian are more closely related to each other than either one is to Hittite. So you can set up something. I've used this term Luvic a few times. Um, mm -hmm. How many languages get fall under Luvic is, is arguable, but definitely Luvian and Lishan, and we should set those apart from Hittite. So Hittite and Luvic, you might say, are sisters. Uh, and then how everything else gets sifted into this uh, into this family tree, yeah, is something that people um, uh, argue about uh, uh, quite a lot. It's just it's it's quite hard to do the internal subgrouping. Hmm. And uh, Cameron also asks about the uh, best guess for the language spoken in the historical city of Troy. Do uh, yeah, I think Luwian is that. Right. So one, I mean, right. So what one possibility, right. Actually, Alan Klukers has a new paper about this. I, uh, you know, he's entertains this. So it, the, the one possibility is it's a language that's kind of, that is Luvian or related to Luvian. We don't have any uh, hieroglyphic Luvian. We don't have any um, uh, Luvian inscriptions that come really from the area right around Troy. And so that uh, makes it hard to say whether there were really Luvian speakers right around there. Um, but again, Luvian, Lycian, Lydian, um, all of these languages are pretty closely related to each other. And so, so you know, one of those or uh, or some language that we don't yet have records for, but is kind of linguistically, uh, a linguistically a close relation to those languages um, would be one possible candidate. The other one that... Um, that people like to talk about um, is something that's ultimately related to Etruscan. <laughs> um, uh, that's the, uh, this is uh, basically uh, based on, <laughs> I, th there, there's more to the argument than this, but the true in, a, in Etruscan would be the same sequence <laughs> as we have in Troy. Uh, and, uh, yeah. and so, uh, and so, and also there's this, you know, the, there's this, um, this would amount to also taking quite seriously the, uh, uh, you know, the Roman foundation myth, this whole thing with Aeneas, right? You have Aeneas, this guy and his family, and they're Trojans, and they make their way to Italian shores and, uh, and, and so on. So, um, uh, so possibly it's a language that's related to Etruscan, but I, I guess if I had to guess, I don't know, um, I, I would say it's probably, uh, uh, something like Luvian. That would be that would be my guess, but uh, but uh, but you know, uh, there are definitely there's there's not very many facts and more than enough uh, 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 that allow more than enough possibility to speculate. You know, to your wildest dreams. Right. I I kind of feel like I should put my my mouth right on the microphone for this one, but. Um... You know, it, it, it has been suggested over the years that Etruscan is Anatolian. Uh, of course, Etruscan is so fragmentarily attested. Um, it's not bad, actually. It's OK, like compared to uh, compared to when I say like fragmentarily attested, like. OK, sure. Vidian or something like that. Uh, that yeah. that's yeah. But but I mean, uh, I take your point. I don't really have I don't see enough there. Or you know, but I'm also not I'm not an expert on Etruscan or um or really anything about this problem. Um I've never I've never seen anyone uh, make a really compelling linguistic argument for it. So um so I, I no. suspect it's probably best to just leave it aside. No, no, I, I I agree. But you know, actually now I'm kind of upset that Luke isn't here because he's gotten obsessed with Etruscan. Oh uh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Like trying to learn everything he can about it, you know. Um uh, and it's it it seems like it's been a frustrating quest. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, this guy mentions that it, it says it thought it had something to do with an Etruscan related like Yes. Uh, he's thinking of Lemnos and yeah, there's Lemnian and this would be a possible kind of connection. This would be a kind of, I mean, how exactly you fit this into the story, but yeah, there, there is an idea that, uh, uh, that, that uh, Lemnian is kind of in the, in this mix. Uh, yeah. But uh, again, I, I, there's a there's a recent article by Alan Flukers that's kind of written. Uh, he wrote one a couple of years back for kind of a popular audience, which uh, would be probably pretty easy to dig up and might might be of interest to people. But um, I don't have the link uh, at hand, so uh, maybe you could uh, you could probably find it out. You could I mean it's on his website. I'm sure, you could find it. That would be one. You know, it's an accessible read. Let's say uh, even if I think you know somewhat speculative. Hmm. Well, and of course, I mean. 
uh, like as long as we're on the Etruscan subject, I mean, Radic and the Alps is pretty transparently related to Etruscan. So Etruscan does have nearer neighbors. Um, yeah, anyway, like we don't have to go down the whole Etruscan rabbit hole. Um, there was another question from... Uh, I miss it. Uh, B. Aborski asks about, uh, has a more precise dating for the newly discovered text in, I guess we can call this Chalismaic, <laughs> been proposed? Do, do you know how, how early or late the, that text is? Uh, no, I don't think they've said anything about this so far. So, uh, you know, I mean, the way that we do dating for this kind of thing is based on uh, the properties of the script. So we can say that it's like a, um, uh, you know, we can look at the way that the, the, the shapes basically and the shapes and other orthographic practices of the Hittites change over time. And that lets us kind of pin down roughly when they wrote down the text. Um, in the case of something like this, uh, the time when they wrote it down is almost sort of, you know, it, that's going to be a pretty, a pretty good indicator for when it, uh, for what it belongs to. Um, but no, there's no, no information about this is available yet. Um, probably all of the material that we have for, um, uh, let's say all the foreign language, mm -hmm. all the stuff that is it, you know, non Hittite, uh, stuff is, all of the stuff that is in, yeah, truly has uh, running, running, running sections of non-Hittite. I believe the earliest stuff is is dated to Middle Hittite. We don't think we have any. I mean, certainly we don't have any Luvian that is old. Maybe there's some Palais. I should maybe I should yeah I shouldn't go any further down this, but we just don't know. Um, it could be you know it could be um, uh, it could be quite early or it could date to uh, you know say, uh, you know, 1500 BC, but it, it you know, it, it could be, uh, you know, uh, it could be quite late. Um, yeah, uh, 1300s or something. And the internal dating, is it mostly by like the reign of the king or what? How, uh, how do they... Yeah, I mean, right. So if you have, you know, mentions of who the, uh, of you know, of, uh, uh, yeah, historical persons like the Hittite, who the Hittite king is at a particular time, that lets us assign it at least an approximate, uh, an approximate uh, date for the text, um, but uh, but yeah, in, in these ritual texts, like I don't think you you're going to get those. I mean, again, these aren't historical texts; it's going to be a ritual, so probably it's not going to have any mentions of useful information like that. Probably the closest thing that we can determine is uh, when the thing was first written down, and and that will be like something like oh, uh, we can look at the script and say that's a, a middle a middle script text and that would put it to say uh uh like the second half of the 15th century or something makes sense i mean familiar challenges and and, and tools from working with medieval texts to some degree mm -hmm. yeah well i mean this is this is tantalizing uh you know i'm looking forward to finding out more about it um but uh it's been kind of fun to, to to sit here and try to figure out what we can about it. I agree. I'm <laughs> happy to like register my speculations in case some of it is right. It might not, you know, it could be complete. Well, I don't think it's going to be completely wrong, but but yeah. um, but it would be fun if I were somehow somehow right about uh, uh, some of some of this stuff. Uh, and it's exciting, you know. It just I think this is good. You know, generate some good press for the European. I mean, I do think if they're going to continue to excavate, you know, um, at at uh, Metatusa. Uh, and elsewhere, you know, I do think occasionally we're going to get things like this, you know, we have mm -hmm. mentioned how the Hittites were interested in the languages that were being spoken around them and incorporated them into their uh, sort of, you know, a, a system of, uh, of worship. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, you know, so it, I guess it wouldn't even be surprising if, if more such things um, turned up, but, but, you know, I mean, it's, look, one thing that's neat is, even if we only have a tiny bit, it is possible that this could have one or two like features that really tell us something um, uh, meaningful about about say the development of the Anatolian languages, mm -hmm. what when with when certain developments occurred, and uh, and so on. Uh, Palaic is very 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 useful uh, in this way. It's got a number of archaic features that if we didn't have Palaic, 
than we would have thought were just completely lost in the Anatolian languages. And we only have a very small amount. I mean, more than, you know, the dozen or three dozen lines that I've suggested we might have a Kales Kalesmaic, um, but, um, but, you know, if we had even just that much Palaic, uh, we don't have way more than that, but even if we had just that much, I think we might've found some of those things. And um, right. uh, yeah. Well, and I mean, what's fascinating with any given Anatolian language is that, you know, they're so divergent in some respects from other Indo-European languages that if you find just a trace in one of them of something that's not otherwise in Anatolian, I mean, it really kind of resets our thinking about the proto-language, right? So like, mm -hmm. say this this newly newly discovered language has an S aorist or something, you know, and it's like, well, that's interesting. <laughs> that, you know, would like be a, one. that would be a very interesting one. Yeah, like a noun that has a... Yeah, that, I'm sorry, a verb that has a, an S through the paradigm. Yeah, that would be, um, yeah, that, right. So that's what I'm saying. It's like just just uh, one one or two uh, interesting features could really tip the balance in how we understand something. And that's, I, I feel like that's, you know, uh, you know, there's all this, it, it, you know, um, uh, this sort of material that's interesting from an internal Anatolian perspective, uh, new, new, you know, new light on Hittites, uh, Hittite, you know, Hittite language and culture and their neighbors and so on. But, but yeah, for the Indo-Europeanists, like it just doesn't take much to kind of tip the balance on some things, uh, especially when you're dealing with Anatolian because of its kind of unique position within the Indo-European family. Mm -hmm. And hey, maybe someday one of these new texts, uh, somebody finds has a touch of Mycenaean written cuneiform or some Proto-Armenian or something. I mean, that would be pretty rad. But, yeah, that 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 would be rad to have something that that is really Greek, other than just like a personal name, right? Because I mean, we yeah. have all these Greek personal names in, uh, you know, from the so-called Ahiawa letters and um, uh, and stuff. But uh, but yeah, to have some real, uh, some real, some real Greek words, some Greek material, that would be, um, that would be really interesting and cool. We got to work together, um, uh, so that we can forge some Anatolian evidence for, um, you know, some pre-Germanic. Uh, I, you know, the more I learn about these things, it's, I, you know, the more I, I, you know, the more I, I feel like, you know, the more you learn about the really, the really, really like expert level stuff in these philological traditions, like creating a really acceptable looking fake would be like, that, that could pass muster for more than two seconds would be really genuinely hard. Well, yeah, hold on. Pass muster with you. Pass muster with... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pass muster with, with, you know, I'm going down a Google rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. uh, there, uh... <laughs> yeah, there was a fake hieroglyphic Luvian inscription that um, uh, got a lot of attention. I don't, I don't remember, maybe 10 years ago or something. Maybe it was more like 15. Uh, that, you know, it... Was, is, you know, someone claimed that they have these, you know, just they only have the the drawings of the inscription that the inscription itself has been lost. But uh -huh. uh, it's a familiar uh, story. It was really quite an embarrassing thing. Like they uh, uh, they just completely screwed basic things up. Like um, so, Luvian is all hieroglyph Luvian is mostly going to be bustro, like bustrophodon. So like you know, right to left or left to right, and then going back the other way. But the, you can tell which direction it's going because like. Um, the the characters will always like sort of face into the direction of the script so like if you have say like a human the word for uh the, the uh, logogram for me is very cute in hieroglyph or i the word i the first person pronoun it's just the guy pointing at himself like this and so <laughs> this this guy <laughs> I might look like a rude gesture on the camera and I realize it's not oh, like it. in profile me, right. me. and uh, uh but uh uh, but yes, yeah, but he'd be looking into the direction of the script. And so they were, right. they screwed stuff like very basic stuff up like that. And, um, and so it was pretty easy to detect that this thing was, uh, was, was false. Oh, I mean, same exact sort of stuff happens with fake runestones. Cause you know, early, early runic is also bestrophed on usually. Yeah. Um, but people never <laughs> to account for that. Um, all right. Well. Uh, with some some thoughts about forgery uh, taking us home here. And any other thoughts you want to you want to conclude with, or any other questions or remarks in the comments? Uh, not too much. I'll make a small pitch in case there are expert uh, expert 
classical linguists in the audience uh, that we're hiring someone officially now at UCLA. Uh, so um, uh, let me see. Hold on. Let me see if I can uh, just give me one moment here and I'll retrieve the link. But yeah, we're hiring someone doing a joint search with classics for um, someone to uh, one, one, one does not replace Brent Vine. So I won't say replace Brent Vine, but for a new classical linguist, uh, here in the Department of Classics and the program in European Studies uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, so if you know anyone like that, or you yourself are an expert in these things, um, you know, come, come, uh, come send in an application and be, uh, be my colleague. <laughs> it's going to be some hot competition for this. Uh, well, yeah, I hope, hope that, that that's a tenure track position too, right? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, open rank actually. So it's uh, so it's tenured or tenure track as appropriate. Nice. Here's the link. Look at that. So uh, so this counts as me circulating it. We're we're supposed to circulate yeah. news of this to as many people, and I'm I'm making a a record of it here. Where... I saw the email too. Yeah. Okay. Well, this counts. This definitely counts as circulating it. Um, are you on? Yeah. Wait, are you on Histling? Are you on that goofy yeah. Histling list? Oh, fantastic! I always wonder who's on it. Yeah, I'm on there. I, I, I'm, I'm. A, what do they call it on forums? I'm a, I'm a lurker on Histling. Yeah, <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever posted, but like, just keep up with what people. That was the first time I've ever sent anything, and I, I, I was surprised to see that it worked. So anyway, but, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, but fantastic. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, as always, Tony, and uh, hopefully we'll have some more news to talk about uh, maybe next month. Yeah, I hope so too. And maybe we can get Luke in on the Luke in on the mix there. That would be fun, I think. Yeah, maybe we can get some Etruscan stuff to talk about. Okay. Uh, who I knows? Something about Etruscan. I don't. You know, not... This this month has been really fascinating. Previous month was really fascinating. So, mm -hmm. um, do you have a link to the Histling mailing list? Davis is asking for it. I don't. I don't know. It's like I think if you just search for that Histling, you'll find this this mailing this mailing list. This is the address associated with it. So you could probably just Google that and um, uh, yeah. and find it. Um, all right. All right. This Everybody, is, uh, all the best. Tell yeah, likewise. Let's talk again soon. All right. See you soon.